In this video we'll be looking at the even sample problems from our elementary algebra Occupyser. Square root of 2 times square root of 15 equals the numbers underneath are called the radicand. When we're multiplying radical expressions we simply multiply them together. So this will be square root of 30. Answer choice B. Number four, get the question sentence first. Which of the following represents the area of the shaded region? In the figure below, both circles have the same center. And the radius of the larger circle is R. So the radius of our larger circle is R. If the radius of the smaller circle is three units less than R, which of the following represents the area of the shaded? Well, remember that the area of a circle is pi R squared. So the area of our large circle is going to be pi times, we use cap R in this situation, so I'm going to change it to that. Well, the area of our smaller circle, it says the radius is three units less than, so that's going to be pi cap R minus three squared. Well, the shaded region is going to be the large circle minus the small circle. Area of shaded will equal the area of our large circle. minus the area of our small circle. It's like that donut looking region. Well in this case we're just going to substitute those values in. It's pi r squared minus pi times quantity cap r minus 3 squared. And that sure enough looks like D. Number six, if x is greater than two, then what does this expression simplify to? Well, they're saying x is greater than two because if you substitute two down here, we'd have four minus four would give zero. That's an excluded value. This is a factoring problem. This bottom expression is a difference of two squares, x plus two, x minus two. This top is our big x method, so we know the bottom is gonna be a times c, which is minus six. The top, we have an implied minus 1 there for B, so we know it's going to be two parentheses, X times X, and then minus 6 in the bottom, so 1 plus 1's minus, 3 times 2 yields 6, and 3 minus 2 will be that negative 1, so it's going to be a minus 3 plus 2. That's going to go in here. One thing, when you have this kind of problem, and we saw this a lot this past year, we know there's going to be some canceling going on, so whatever you have in your numerator, or your, whichever one you factored first will give you a hint for that other one. Since this was x plus 2, x minus 2, it's likely the top was going to be one of those factors. The x plus 2 will cancel with the x plus 2 to leave us x minus 3 over x minus 2. 6 is b. Number 8. Got a little distributing to do here distributing the 3 on the left hand side 2x remains the same minus 3 times x will be a minus 3x minus 3 times plus 4 will be a minus 12 now we will combine these two like terms to yield minus x minus 12 equals minus 5 adding 12 to both sides leaves us minus x equals 7 and then we have an implied negative 1 here. We'll divide by that. X is a negative 7. The correct answer is B. Another way you could have done it is simply to substitute each one of these answers in for X up here and see what is, which one would have satisfied it.
which of the following inequalities is equivalent to the inequality shown below? They're just asking us to solve for x. So we have 20 minus 4 fifths x is greater than or equal to 16. One thing you can do when you have a fraction, you can simply go through and multiply that by that denominator and it'll get rid of um, your fraction. And we saw this this year with um, our dealing with our um, rational expressions. I'm just going to multiply everything by 5. 20 times 5 will be 100. 5 times 4 fifths since simply cancels that denominator, leaving minus 4x. 5 times 16 is 80. This might be easier for you to solve. Subtracting 100 on both sides leaves minus 4x is equal to minus 20. Not equal to. Should be greater than or equal to. Then dividing by my coefficient, negative 4. X, remember to switch the direction of the inequality when you divide by negative. Not minus 200 here, should have been just 20. Minus 20 divided by minus 4 will be a positive 5. X is less than or equal to 5. Number 10 is a. I will show the direct solving on this one as well. So we have um, 20 minus 4 fifths x is greater than or equal to 16. Subtracting 20 on both sides yields negative 4 fifths x is um, greater than or equal to negative 4. Now we could divide by this 4 fifths on both sides, but equivalently it's multiplying by the reciprocal, multiplying by negative 5 over 4. Multiplying by negative 5 over 4. So the 4 cancels with the 4. To leave negative 5 times negative 1 essentially is 5. And these two will cancel each other. X and again not equals. We should change the direction of the inequality because when you multiply divide by negative. So this is same. X less than equal to 5. Number 12, if you miss this one, I no longer know you. 5t plus 2 is equal to 6. Subtracting 2 on both sides leaves 5t is equal to 4. Dividing by 5, t is 4 over 5. If you missed it, just lie to me, please. 12 is c. All right, here we have an expression with a whole lot of um, x's down in here in it, in the denominator. So what we need is to find a common denominator. It gives us this disclaimer x not zero because we can't have zero in the denominator. Well, hopefully you see we have 5x here. So our common denominator is 5x. We need them all to look like 5x's. Let's multiply this one and this one by 5 over 5. That yields 5u over 5x plus 25u over 5x. And then that last one remained the same. Again, we've just found a common denominator like you did your whole life. We multiplied the first two terms by 5 over 5, which is just 1. We didn't change any values. Now, since we have the denominators equal, the denominator will stay equal. Combining like terms in the numerator, 5u plus 25u will be 30u minus 1u will be 29u. 14 is c. <clears throat> 16. How many solutions? That's what we're looking for. Are there for the system above? Well, um, we learned a lot of ways to solve a system. One um, easy way is the elimination method. In this case, I can quickly see that this is a 1x and that's a 2x. So let me multiply this bottom equation by a negative 2. I'm multiplying the whole bottom equation by negative 2. 
when I do, we get negative 2x minus 6y equals negative 4. The top one remains the same. 2x plus 6y equals 5. Now we can add down the columns. Well, 2x minus 2x, that's 0. It eliminates. But so does 6y plus negative 6y. That's also 0. So the whole left expression is 0. 5 minus 4 is 1. If all of your variables fall out and you get this false statement, this tells you there are no solutions. These would be two parallel lines. Graphically, it would be two parallel lines. Okay. If, however, you, the variables fall out and you get some true statement, then this would be infinitely many solutions. Graphically, it would be two lines right on top of one another. Sixteen is a <clears throat> eighteen. Another factoring problem. When factoring, the first thing we look for is a GCF. So in the top, the numerator, hopefully you see the GCF will be two x to the fourth power. Because ten two goes into ten and eight. And when you're dealing with the variables, if they both have the variable, go to the least and take it all. 10 divided 2 is 5. x6 divided x4 is x squared. Our exponent, our quotient rule says to subtract when dividing. Subtract the exponents. 8 divided 2 will be 4. x to the 4th of a x to the 4th is x to the 0. I don't have to put that. This is all over 2x squared. Now we can do some canceling. 2 will cancel with the 2 x squared will divide with x fourth to leave an x squared. All right, now we need to distribute to get to one of these looking terms. x squared times 5x squared will be 5x to the fourth. x squared times 4 will be a 4x squared. And that looks like C. 18 is C. <clears throat> Number 20 to the question sentence, what was her average rate the next day in terms of P? On Monday, Helen took three hours, three hours to do a page of the science homework exercises. The next day, she did the same number of exercises in two hours. Her average rate on Monday, her average rate on Monday was P. Um, hopefully, you know that rate, some speed is some distance divided by time. In this case, our distance is number of problems. Number of problems divided by time. You know, problems per hour, say, in this case. The Monday rate, Monday, is some number of problems divided by three. But we're also calling that P. That's P. All right. We don't know what Tuesday is. That's the question in terms of this P. All right. Well, the Tuesday, the same number of problems. I'm just going to call that number of problems. Divided by 2. Well, if I want this left-hand side to look like this, what do I need to multiply by? I want to make this 3 look like a 2. Well, I need to multiply by 3 over 2. If you multiply, let's looking at looking at this top equation here. If you multiply this by 3 over 2, all right, well, this 3 will cancel with this 3 to leave 2, 2 in the bottom. So what I have on the left-hand side is number of problems. over 2. And that is this left-hand side of my Tuesday equation. Well, whatever I do to one side, I'll do to the other. 
So if I multiplied the left side by 3 over 2, I need to multiply the right side by 3 over 2. That makes that 3 over 2p. So I see that the number of problems divided by 2, which was the choose D rate, is going to be 3 over 2p. Why does this make sense? Well, note that 3 over 2 is 1.5. If Helen did all the exercises in three hours and then the next day did all the exercises in two hours, she went 50% faster. And you can see that go heading in this direction. Going from two to three, 50% of two is one. Two plus one would be three. So the correct answer on number 20 is D.